Again, welcome back. This is Act 4. <laughs> and then, of course, we'll have a little bit of an epilogue. And that's really important for you to understand, as I said, that all business is show business. It's all where you put on a performance. And you literally do not describe what you do. You demonstrate how good you are. Can I really encourage you to do that? Now, that's why you use this a lot. By the way, in the future, your book will be your business card. I'm going to challenge you. All of you need to write a book. Talkers are hawkers and writers are experts. That's right. I'm sorry. 87% of the people say they're going to write a book someday. They want to write a book, and they don't. Thanks to Kindle right now and everything else, all of you could write a book. And you say, would you like a copy of my book? Oh, you're a writer? You're an author? Yes, I am. Wow. Um, the video is your business card. Somebody says, what do you do? Say, Let me send you a little video and it'll demonstrate what I do. By the way, uh, Steve knows I do this all the time because I have a line. If it's important, it needs to be heard. So I use my iPhone. I actually go into the memos and I actually do a personal memo. Hi, Sveno. This is Stan. Hey, I was really glad to see you. I really encourage you. And remember, remember what I said. Remember this. A man has three choices. He can be really, really smart. He can be really, really good looking. Or he can have a really good head of hair. And I chose the first two. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, good marketing always makes people smile. Did you know that? If there's a commercial you like, please notice that you're smiling. Progressive insurance has nothing to do with insurance. It has, hopefully, flow is going to make people smile. And people do like that gecko. Good marketing makes people smile. So. I can attach that to an email, and I can send it to him, and he gets it. And instead of getting a boring text message, which he can't read on the small screen, he hits the link, and he hears me. If it's important, it needs to be heard. That's one of the reasons I hate email and text messages, even though I have to use them, because I know that if you want to really affect people, faith comes by hearing. That's why the dead tree doesn't work. That's why the radio works better. Because I hear it. I experience it. We now know that actually the part of the brain that is most conducive to things for action is triggered by sound. And part of the reason the younger generation is going to have a hard time in life is many of them have not had any speech and broadcast training. They are just simply texting and emailing on their machines. And as a result, they are losing vital social skills for their career. That's a problem. Mm. I mean, I literally worked with a guy one time. I said, what do you want your people to know? Great question. He was a sec technology dealer. Technology guy, had 200 people in a software company. He said, what would you like your people to know? He said, you know what? All of my kids who work for me are really, really smart, and they're really, really bright, and they're really awkward. Would you teach them how to get a date? <laughs> sure, we can do that. <laughs> he says, they don't know how to get a date. They're awkward. They're socially awkward. By the way, one of the great social advantages will be is you teach your children how to relate, how to look people right straight in the face. By the way, start teaching that now. How to teach your kids to make a great impression. Be fully present. 
as I say, when I show up, I'm there and no place else. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not checking my messages. Right there. Because you are the most important person in the world. And I am going to give you my full attention. By the way, start doing that. And you're going to find some remarkable things will happen. If people know that you are not working the room, you are fully there. When someone comes into the shop, you're fully there. Your employees have been told, if I'm talking to a customer, you shut up. You don't ask me questions. I don't take any phone calls. When I'm with a customer, I'm there. <laughs> and none of you. I, I, even in the grocery store, a few of the young kids have learned it. They're there. <laughs> but most of them are talking to their buddies, messing around, yelling, screaming. And all I am is the paying customer. It's not because they're bad kids, it's just no one taught them <laughs> that this is the person who pays your salary. They're the most important person in the world. Uh, be there. I even up at Saddlebrook taught the young people, said, by the way, lots of these people have money <laughs> and they own companies. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're really nice to them, guess what might happen? <laughs> they might hire you. So be different. Oh, no one ever taught us that before. Okay? Now, these are things you begin to all when you understand these three principles. First of all, I can tell my story really quickly. I know my one-minute message. Secondly, I read the secret sign. Thirdly, I'm always trying to create a great experience, and being treated as the most important person in the world is a great experience. And all of that flows together. Now, part of the reason I want you to understand this type of stuff is I don't want you to ever have to describe what you do. Okay? I want you to, to do put this down very importantly. Okay? D D D. Don't describe. Don't describe what you do. D, D, D. Don't describe what you do or what your product does. There's two things I want you to do besides describe what you do. I don't care what annuities do. I don't care what financial services do. I don't care about any of that stuff. I don't care about any of that stuff. What I really want to do is if my daughter in New York says, Dad, could you come out and visit? I want to be able to do it. That's what I want to do. All that stuff you could talk about. By the way, I'm going to tell you a story. Did you notice that's all I do? Mm -hmm. Is uh, I was speaking at an insurance convention one time, and I was talking about the power of creating a great experience and telling stories. Remember, that's all I do. Just tell stories. And one of their top salesmen stood up and said, Stan, uh, I have a story to tell. I said, sure. And he said, a lot of the people in here know that I'm one of the top salesmen in the country. And I said, oh, yeah. he, said, he said, I'm the big guy. He says, first of all, don't believe all that stuff. He was actually a humble man. That's why he was good. <laughs> people loved him. He said, let me tell you the secret of my success. He says, my first year out, um, I was trying to get my business going. And some person at church recommended that I talk to this very prominent businessman. Wow, a referral, a good lead. And uh, he said, I was so happy. So I called him up. And obviously, he called him up. You know, we did all the right stuff. And he said, I'll, I'll be glad to see you. I said, oh, this is a big deal. So he got all of his brochures and got all of everything ready to do and put it all together, you know, and got all those illustrations. And he said, I walked in, I walked into the office. And boy, there was a very, very impressive office. And this was a big man in town. Uh, secretary invited me in. And as I walked in, I found out the man was blind. Just blind. 
that meant all of my illustrations and all of my brochures and all of that good stuff that I used to sell was what? Worthless. And he said, I didn't know what to do, so I just sat down and I slowed down. Because you know what people do that. They think, well, you're <laughs> That's clear, but it's a good point. I slowed down, spoke, spoke a little more clearly, and I just started asking him questions about his company and his business because I was stalling for time. <laughs> and he said, by the time I got done, I just simply said, with your permission, I'd love wonderful word. I've used this all the time. With your permission. With your permission. I would like to make an offer. And he did. And he said, you have to understand that most of my business success was the fact that I always approached my clients saying, what if they were blind? Great sales technique. How would I treat a blind person? And that's why I was successful in my business. I learned that from the very start. Now, what you do is you don't describe what you do. You, first of all, get a DWI conviction. Now, if you really want to be successful in business, you have to have several DWI convictions. You do. Now, you're obviously knowing that I'm playing with you. But that's exactly what the show is all about. I've got to keep you interested. What do you mean you have to get a DWI conviction? Well. What has to happen is very simple. You have to be convicted of demonstrated wisdom and insight. That's what you've got to be convicted of. When you walk in, they find what? Wisdom and insight they never knew was there. Wow, how did you know that? That's different. I've never heard that before. I want to walk in, and by the way, here's a challenge for you. When you walk in to a client, assume that the sales call is going to be so helpful that you could charge them $200 for the sales call. I have every right at the end of this show to ask all of you for a check for $500. I have every right to do that. Because that's how valuable the information could be to you. I have to have demonstrated wisdom and insight. And then, instead of describing what I do, I have to demonstrate. I have to demonstrate how good I am. I have to demonstrate that when you deal with me and my company and my organization, this is the kind of value or service you get. So I have to go in and demonstrate my wisdom and insight. Wow. By the way, that's why you write a book. That's why you create videos. That's why you are continually putting things out. No. Rick ought to be out there saying seven ways to deal with the biggest pains in your life that aren't people. <laughs> I can't deal with the people pains. Um, one of my friends is a chiropractor, very good, and we've helped, we've helped him a lot. What he actually does is, in effect, he is basically saying is, let's start without chemical engineering or human butchery. Says, because medicine has become what? Chemistry and surgery. Do you like chemistry? You, by the way, those drug ads scare me. You got those side effects? My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Say, wow. Well, this might take away the pain in your back, but it'll kill you if you're not careful. <laughs> well, that will take care of the pain for sure. <laughs> you know, rest in peace means something, you know. <laughs> No pain. You're dead. Okay. So, how can I demonstrate my wisdom and insight? How can I demonstrate? The best way is, let me tell you a story. 
let me tell you a story. And then you see, you're not telling people how good you are. You are letting the story tell how good you are. By the way, nobody can argue with your story. You got that? I can argue with your facts. I can argue with your figures. I can argue with your statistics. I can argue with everything, but I can't argue with your story. Think about that. Because it's your story. It's true. And sometimes you can do a little bit parabolic, like I say. You know, all my stories are true. They're just not all real, but they're all true. <laughs> and somebody got really upset with me. And then I simply said, was the story of the prodigal son a real story or a true story? I don't know if it was a real story, but it's a true story. Because I've lived it. I have had prodigals. And some of you do too. See, nobody can argue with your story. Because it's your story. They can, like I said, they can argue with your facts, your figures, your statistics. They cannot argue with your story. It's my story. And by the way, people will be attracted to that because it's your story. And then, what's your story? Remember, what's your story? Nothing happens until our stories meet. Now, with that in mind, eventually we're going to try and get to that point where we play that terrible game called, I need a referral. I need a lead. No. First of all is, I've just done a video, so I've said, stop networking. Stop networking. Networking is basically a bad singles bar. That's all it is. We're all there saying, notice me. How wonderful I am. We're all hitting on each other. Trying to get business. Aren't we? That's all it is. How does that work out for you? doesn't work. That's not how we're made. The point is to stop networking and start being friends. Just start being friends to people. Next time, go to a networking shop and don't say a thing about you and don't pass out a business card. Just have fun by listening to other people. It's, a, it's not a good thing. By the way, as I'm telling young people, throw away your resume. By the way, every resume is great because they're all coached by done and done. <laughs> uh, by the way, you don't ever ask uh, for an interview anymore. You ask for an audition. I'm auditioning all the time. By the way, Barbara Streisand didn't get her job because she interviewed well. When this ugly, funny-looking young girl from Brooklyn, New York, came in, they sat her on a stool, and they said, sing! <laughs> and the lady could sing. And she can sing. You may not like her politics. You may not like anything else about her. But the lady can sing. I always say, I would like to audition. Our like to audition to be the person who cares for your pain. Now we're going to find out if you're any good, right? Free auditions. All audition, all right? Isn't that make it a lot more fun? I'd love to I actually helped a gal get a job one time. I do this all the time. Uh, I've actually told companies, don't interview people. Ask them to audition. You're coming in for an audition. Whole different is uh, she told me she was a friend of mine and she said I want the receptionist job but there's there's two other ladies I know involved and they're older ladies they've been very much more experienced they've done it before and they're just looking for jobs they lost their job and so they want they they just they need the work 
And I said, she said, I, I said, I'm just out of high school. What are, I can't match their resume. I said, we're not going to try that. We're not going to try and out resume them. So what should I do? I said, go to the manager and say, you know, I've noticed that you're thinking about between two or three of us. And by the way, is I noticed right now you have a temp worker. He said, yep. She said, the next two weeks, I'll be your temp worker for free. She said, I'd like to audition. So I taught her to say it. Audition. So at the end of the two weeks, you got a free temp worker. Guess what happened? They hired her. She auditioned. She demonstrated how good she was. She demonstrated wisdom and insight. Now, what we're trying to do is get people to do something that they don't want to do. How do you know? <laughs> Have you ever been subjected to that? Who do you know? And now they're going to try and get me to write. Who do you know needs life insurance? <laughs> Who do you know needs care? Who? I hate that. When you ask me to do that, that's a terrible experience. Isn't it? Do you like to be put on the spot? Most people don't like that, but you're taught. Get referrals. Get referrals. Here's my line. Stop asking for referrals and start deserving recommendations. Stop asking for referrals and start deserving recommendations. By the way, you never want a referral. Kathy, never use that word again. Rick, you want to say ever again. You don't want a referral. By the way, as I point out, when Bill Clinton was almost impeached for his Monica thing, uh, he was referred for prosecution. He got a referral. That's what it's called legally. You know that? <laughs> a referral is for legal action. <laughs> Been referred for prosecution. No, you don't want a referral. Oh, charity does paint. He does car work. No. What you want is someone to what? Wreck. Please remember you don't want any referrals. You want recommendations. Need a speaker? Oh, Stan Houston speaks. No. That's a referral. I want a recommendation. Now, and so do you. You always want a recommendation. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to teach you the great line. Okay, let's say someone does something and you do something for them and they're very pleased by what you did. And they say, thank you. Have you ever heard people say thank you? What do you say? I'm going to give you a little more tip. Thank you. You're welcome. By the way, I love dealing with people like you. I would be grateful if you'd recommend me to your friends. What did you just do? Treated them as if they're... You said, I love working with people like you. I bet you have friends who are what? As good as you are. <laughs> I would love. By the way, Key word, grateful. Most powerful word in the English language. I would be grateful. I would be grateful if you'd recommend me to others. I'd be grateful if you'd... Now, does, is that off-putting? No. But it also means you've got to do what? You've got to deserve it. <laughs> That's why the people say, well, as, as soon as you get the insurance policy, Ask for a referral. No, you don't deserve a re you don't deserve a referral or a recommendation. You just delivered a product. <laughs> delivered the product. You're doesn't know what he or she's talking about. They're idiots. You don't deserve a referral. You only want to gain a recommendation. 
But you can pr promote that by giving people permission. I would be grateful if you'd recommend me to others. By the way, you then also practice the policy of simple gifts. By the way, my pens do not have any advertising on them. So then it's a cheap advertising trick, right? But guess what? Every time they use a pen by Stan Houston, they remember what? Me. That's right. They remember me. Wow. Oh, this is that $100 pen that Stan Houston made, and he gave it to me. It's not really worth $100. But I show him a picture of one that costs $100. It cost me five. <laughs> And I had fun making it. Scrap wood anyhow. That's not the point. The point was the experience. So, <coughs> excuse me, going forward, <coughs> we are always going to look for experiences when people say, thank you. We deserve it. We have what? We've created an experience. We've given wisdom and insight. We've demonstrated how good we are. They've had a great experience. And then we have the right and the privilege to say what? I would be grateful if you'd recommend me to others. I would be grateful if I could meet people just as nice as you are. No. Um, and that's powerful. That's powerful. Now, we oftentimes use the expression OPM, other people's money. As I say, the goal of life is to put people like me out of business because I teach marketing and you don't want to learn marketing. You want other people to do your marketing. You want other people to do your marketing. Don't you? Yeah, you want other people. Because when you tell people how good you are, they might not believe you. <laughs> but when somebody else tells other people how good you are, they might believe that. The goal is to get your marketing budget to zero. And for you to say to Stan, Stan, I don't need you because I don't market. My clientele does all my marketing and it doesn't cost me a cent, so why should I pay you to tell me to learn something I don't have to do? Way to go. Good for you. So, lesson number four is what now? Stop asking for referrals and start deserving recommendations. And I would be grateful if you would recommend me to others.